And it's good to be here and to allow all the consciousness substance that we have in our worlds to come together. We are collectors individually and collectively of spiritual substance through day-to-day -day life. The mechanism of body and mind and heart is the means whereby life force can ascend. In India they speak of it as Kundalini. And Kundalini is a natural process of substance ascending. It moves from the base of the spine. There's a sacred sac there up to the the top of the spine. There's another sacred sac. Vibrational substances are main concern as we develop the different bodies. Our body, physically speaking, is one aspect of form, one aspect of the body. But being the most dense part of form, being the densest body, the substance ascends to mind, to the consciousness, to thought. And then from consciousness of thought, it ascends to the consciousness of feeling. And then from the consciousness of feeling, it ascends to the vibrational plane, the spiritual substance level, where each responsible to build the vibrational level. All too often, though, the instructions have been translated as religious or some sort of dogmatic type of view when essentially the substance of the vibrational being it merges because mankind does something the human participates in the link building the link between heaven and earth between divine being and human being between the realm of cause and the realm of effect this is the vibrational level this is the level that consciously we're all on earth able to participate in. This is the most natural level of participation. Sometimes people experience this level by just being good in the world. There are those who experience this level by just participating with a great deal of integrity in day-to-day -day life. And there are those who uh, experience this level because they serve mankind. And there are those who experience this level because they serve the Creator. The nations, the nationality, the religions are in that sense all pointless because they don't see the oneness and the reality of the oneness that we are all participating in on Earth. Our opportunity is to connect as individuals with the whole oneness. Because oneness is. If we go out from space, we can see that the oneness is all around us. Earth is a tiny little speck of dust floating through the cosmos. And as we get closer, we see that that tiny speck of dust has um, life on it. We're part of that life. So the vibrational level is the easiest way to connect with all of humanity. Because the vibration, the kundalini as it rises through and up the spine, it goes from the sacred sac at the base of the spine to the top of the spine. Those who experience kundalini rising experience the transcendent nature of divine life here on earth. But it goes through three knots, the base of the spine, in the back, and at the neck. And quite often these three knots can cause some kundalini effects. And they can cause pain. They can cause things to go on in our day-to-day -day life. This is the so-called serpent of fire. Because the substance as it goes up the spine, it's, it's substance of fire, spiritual fire. 
we're going through very naturally all over the earth just by the reason of getting old we go through kundalini we go through the rising up of the serpent of fire when we're children we're used to the world being a certain physical place our consciousness is given to knowing mostly a physical reality as we get a little older we go through a mental reality understanding everything learning everything and this is a phase of trying to learn and understand everything on a mental level when we finish school there's a ascension to and through the process of school a, a learning of love a learning of emotions so we go to the emotional body and then at a certain point very naturally we're meant to live and move into a vibrational body this vibrational body is the body of light it surrounds all things all people it's the body of the creator the creator being that is individually you that's individually every single man woman and child out there on earth so there's been a mechanism that was built into the very nature of mankind now there's no really hard way of allowing that mechanism to work it's the most natural thing but the mechanism gets hung up by reason of mind and heart the so-called ego consciousness we can transcend that we can move as individuals because the whole time through our life the more we live in the ego consciousness the more we're plagued by this rising serpent of fire the life force but there's an individual experience in that and a collective experience some of the great teachers of the past some of the spiritual beings and experienced tremendous amount of pain up their spine and the reason is that as one commits to allowing the life force to rise up as individuals it has to go through the blockages of consciousness individually and collectively blockages of consciousness are brought to us by our parents not through day-to-day -day life necessarily but through the hereditary influences that we're we're here with from our fathers from our mothers from our grandparents from our great grandparents over 4000 years and more of generations of ancestors and then into the deep racial memories of the consciousness of the planet into memories of Lemuria and Atlantis and back to before that to the time of a paradise state they used to exist on the planet as far as the memories as far as the vision goes a state of consciousness that was described as paradise nirvana and there are different words for it also but the words aren't so much a separate place they're all talking about the same experience that extended for thousands and thousands of years well over a hundred thousand years on earth people lived in the paradise state and through that paradise state the consciousness of mankind was meant to grow in the form to live till all the substance became light till all the substance became divine this process used to take between four and six thousand years in the Garden of Eden or in Lemuria when we think back of what it was called the lifespans of four thousand years six thousand years were very common but gradually as the consciousness lowered itself from the perfect state of union between divine consciousness and human consciousness the fallen state so to speak was born lifespans started lowering themselves certain conditions experienced of perfection in the vibrational level of life were lost in awareness to mankind so we have memories and visions of paradise 
And there are also his memory and fables and mythology of a time when people wake up, when consciousness re-enters the golden age. We're all here on earth participating in this re-entry, this coming back to the perfect divine state on earth. It's not a place just for one or two or a few, because really on earth none of us are free in an absolute sense till the whole of the planet is free. We're not doing this just for our own edification. It would be pointless to just do this for some sort of state of enlightenment. Enlightenment goes into just the beginning, when the body and the substance turns to light, when it starts to reach into the dimensions where God, where the divine God and Goddess Being are one with the human, the creature part. Then, once enlightenment starts, and the process is one of letting enlightenment flesh out, letting the light of the divine being come through form, come through body, come through mind, come through the emotions, come through the in power, in divine power, divine consciousness, power to recreate the world. When mankind fell asleep, they lost awareness of walking with the divine. Individually, this was and is the process we're meant to reach at an early age. And we're meant to come to the place where everything that we need to know, everything that we experience, is by reason of the fact that the human walks once again with the Divine Being. Day after day, moment after moment, time after time, the human is able to access and speak with God. Not invisible God somewhere else, but the God being that is incarnate in these human vessels. Our natural state is oneness between heaven and earth. Our natural state is as creator beings, where we create the planet the way we choose, where we create outcomes the way we choose, where we create creatures, where we speak things into existence. But these levels were taken away from mankind many thousands of years ago because of mankind's inability to stay at rest and at peace. The hardest thing has been to bring the human creature through all the hereditary and racial and ancestry things in consciousness back to momentary living in peace. And the God being, the life force of the human is always there from the moment of birth from the moment of from the time of incarnation into the baby form till the time of death and three days thereafter the god being is there pumping blood looking after a form healing the wounds creating an environment a living reality that seems to be real to the human but in fact, it could be described and is described as a dream state. When we look around us, it's a fabrication of the consciousness of divinity projected into the world, projected into a mind level of consciousness, so that we can be in this level of mind. Mind is the level that we're experiencing mind and heart experience this from a particular perspective. The transcendent nature of consciousness is that we can go beyond mind and heart, coming back to the place of oneness, not with some invisible God out there, not with some idea of God, not with a belief in God, because there's no point. People have believed in God, they've had all sorts of superstitious nonsense going on, ideas of sacrifice and atonement of blood sacrifice and things, very ancient and old superstitious beliefs. The reality is that in truth you are God, you are a divine being. And the process of ascension whereby the human can be fully merged into the oneness of that reality 
is always there. It's just people forgot, forgot how to live in the peace so that the connection, the vibrational component that connects heaven and earth, that connects the divine state with the human state, that connection can be built. But it takes literally staying in peace, choosing peace. We can experience all things in day-to-day -day life, but the moment we experience and lose a centering of peace, the light connection starts to get some ripples in it. The more there are ripples in our level of peace, the less we can access the consciousness of the Divine. The communication starts to be garbled between heaven and earth. So it's important to learn to build that substance of peace, to make the individual day-to-day -day choices of being in peace. Experiencing in our world in whatever fashion it is. We don't have to uh, go and live in a cave somewhere. We don't have to ignore day-to-day -day life. We have tremendous amounts of things that are given to us to experience and enjoy. All the things that we have are given to us to experience and be filled with the joy of life with and be thankful for. But all too often the reality for individuals tends to be caught up with something that's of turmoil. The heart and the mind, they need to be yoked together in peace so that they operate together. When the heart operates and is in control, the emotions can be upset by all sorts of things. When the mind operates and is in control, the ideas can keep the emotions from experiencing the reality of the oneness. So we need a balance in there. Heart and mind have to come to rest together. The emotions when they're calm and the mind when it's still allows peace. The vibration of peace, the kundalini substance to trickle moment after moment after moment, day after day, Every day there's a trickling of this energy up the ascending flame, up the spinal column. We can choose to use that, that uh, substance, the sacred substance of Kundalini, for all sorts of things. But people have been using it for so many destructive patterns that they forget to let it build. They've forgotten We've forgotten as a species to let that Kundalini rise in peace and connect heaven and earth, connect the divine God or goddess being with the human, uh, male and female. Every single man, woman and child has the same mechanism. It's not a religious thing, it's just a, a way, just as much as the flowers, just as much as the trees just as much as creatures grow. It's just a built-in mechanism of how things were designed. We're designed to ascend. We're designed to move from this level of consciousness to an experience of the perfection, the bliss, without an idea of it. It's not meant to be a belief again. So we have to build with intent, with care, our own vibrational field. We're not responsible for somebody else's. We don't have to uh, insist on someone else building their vibrational field. Because we can't. Everybody has their own choice. Everybody has their own ideas and beliefs and things. So it doesn't matter what everybody else does. What matters in the long run is what we do as individuals to build that connection layer of peace between our divineness and the humanness so that the humanness day after day can walk with the divine can be in such peace and thankfulness to the divine being that eventually as all the substance rises as all the human moves up every day in thankfulness to life 
to the creator inside. That eventually when the body drops off, the human is living in a light body. The human has become fully one with the light and goes through past death very gently and easily. Because the process has been that the ascension process has been blocked. There are things in the subconsciousness, things of fear and shame and guilt propagated through primarily religions and beliefs, primarily superstitious stuff that went on and goes on. People are afraid of all sorts of things. People are afraid of God and the devil and all sorts of absurd conditions, all superstitious. And the reality is we're not meant to live in fear. We're meant to live in such peace and thankfulness day after day and that we can experience the bliss of day-to-day -day life with our families, with our friends, with all those that the Creator Being, the Divine Being, is putting in front of us. Because day after day we're given experiences, food, creatures, vegetation, minerals. We absorb different things into our cellular structure. Our digestive system absorbs it. And through the process it goes from digested minerals, digested creatures, digested food of one form or another, and then it becomes part of our physical body. Our physical body sorts this substance into substance that can and will ascend and become part of our next higher body and substance that can't. Some substance doesn't want to rise up to the next higher body. So it's pushed back down and we flush it down the drain because it goes back and in some period of time it'll become part of vegetables or creatures or minerals, part of the earth again. It's died because it's no longer part of the life force of the God being. But it hasn't died, it's just been pushed to a lower level of vibration. So we don't have to have a funeral over it. When we cut our hair, when we cut our fingernails, when we defecate, we don't have to worry about something dying. It's just part of a natural process of ascension. So also with what we think of in terms of as death. And death is just letting go of certain substance that's unwilling to rise up. When the physical form rises up, it becomes mind and part of the mind-body. Mind isn't just in the head. Mind exists as a full body. Mind has legs, it's got arms, it's got limbs, it's got bodies. So much so that it's very easy to test. Sometimes you get poked somewhere in the body and you can it brings up something. It brings up a thought, brings up a memory. Because mind is accessed by the form like a radio transmitter. The body is like a radio transmitter and a radio receiver. It picks up when it moves into a level of mind. It tunes into the mind world that we see all around us. It tunes into the thought. People think that mind is just in the head. But in every single part of the, the body, there is mind consciousness, there is thought consciousness. And it's meant to be a process where that thought consciousness moves up even higher. What's higher than thought? Well, feelings. When experiences all the different feelings it does. But primarily when the mind experiences the feelings of joy and peace and harmony with the universe, with joy and peace of harmony with life around, with friends and family and things that we do, then that mind substance ascends. If it doesn't ascend, it again goes, gets pushed back down to a lower level and eventually gets flushed out. So it's a natural process. Some substance rises up, 
some substance gets pushed down. And ultimately at the end, even when it comes to the mind at the point of death, that's the hardest thing for the mind to do is to let go. At the point of death, people have the hardest time if they don't let go of their mind ideas of death, of their thoughts of fear and all the things that go on in their mind. Because we can't take anything from the mind any higher. The process doesn't allow for mind substance to be higher. It's a part of this mind-made reality. But by mind substance becoming feelings, becoming the feelings of day-to-day -day life and peace and harmony and joy and love and all of the other expressions of feelings, then the ascension of mind happens. There's a feeling when the substance of mind goes up to the level of feeling. It's a whole different level. It's a different language. When one speaks with mind, one's speaking of thinking. I think this, I think that, I think this, I think that. When one speaks to the emotional body, one hears feelings. I feel this, I feel that. It's a whole different language. It's a whole different experience. Body doesn't speak. Body is creature. Fully natural animal. Body loves to pick up on instinctive things. It has an instinctive nature so that when we go close to a fire, we don't do it so that we don't burn ourselves. That's instinct. But mind can control body so someone can hurt themselves when the mind is in control. But when the feelings are in control, they too can hurt the body. They too can be self-destructive in one way or another. And the feelings, the heart, the emotions, because it's not just love. Feelings cover a huge amount of body, the feeling body. People sometimes make the dedication to just try to live in the feelings of love. It's very hard to live in just the feelings of love. There are all sorts of feelings in there. There are feelings of anxiousness, there are feelings of anxiety, there are feelings of sorrow, there are feelings of joy. The whole, the whole feeling body has a range, like the rainbow of feelings. And feelings, as they work through the Kundalini, they have a chance to ascend also into the vibrational divine body. The beginning of the divine body, because the divine light body is so much higher that from a physical aspect, most people don't comprehend it. But as we build our vibrational body, the light body, as we allow the substance of body and mind and heart to come to the realm, the beginning of the realm of light, the beginning of the light body, we start to perceive what the effect is of the light body, what the dimension is of the light body. It can't only be described by the mind. It can't only be experienced by the heart. But mind and heart experience and the physical form experiences the light body when it all comes to rest. The mind feels still. The heart feels at peace. And in that experience, the physical body is just like a little puppy dog or kitty cat, just humming along, very content to just be here. Naturally, day after day, experiencing all the things that are brought moment by moment, day by day. So the light body has an effect on the physical body. The physical body sometimes when it experiences the light body, it starts to feel the light body and it translates it as heat. Hmm. People sometimes feel heat when they're within the range of either their own light body or someone else's light body. The more you develop and allow your light body to develop, people will feel something from you that 
They can't put in words fully. It may be able to be described as heat or some sort of sensation that they're aware of isn't from touch, isn't from physical touching, which goes beyond the ability of the mind to try to manipulate, because the mind can't manipulate the vibrational. So the mind feels quite like out of control. It feels like it wants to be in control, but it's experiencing something that it doesn't know how to manipulate, it doesn't know how to create. And the emotions, they listen to the mind and the mind tries to do everything in its power to recreate the sensation and then the awareness. People do all sorts of spiritual things and psycho-spiritual things out there to try to find out how to make this work. There are all sorts of spiritual ideas. There's nothing new. There's no new age in that sense. People have been doing this for thousands of years, trying to work it out with the mind or the heart without having to build a light body. It's only when the mind and the heart let go because they can no longer control and finally give up on trying to control it that the experience of the light body starts to fill out more. It comes more and more and more and the more the mind and the heart serve the light body allowing substance to be lifted up gently and easily each day in peace the more the light body gets thicker, it becomes tangibly more. You can feel it. You can move your hand over your other hand and you can feel it. You can move your hand over someone else's hand and you can feel it and they can feel it. The more that light body builds, the more there is the experience of the divine being within. The beginning is the hint of the reality that the divine being is is here and God isn't in some far distant place God isn't somewhere else God is within you within every single individual the God being is there it's just that intervening connection substance has to be built it takes a little bit of work but the work is mostly of staying in peace it's not having to go to church, it's not having to say certain prayers or do certain rituals, it's none of that. In fact, people try all sorts of ritual ways to engender it, but it's just day-to-day -day life that engenders it. We come together in a time like this and we can share these pieces of information of what we experience and how to access this, but this is only for an hour or so. And then we have our day-to-day -day lives. And we go our separate ways and then comes the proving out. Then comes the ability to, or inability in some cases, but primarily the ability to work through in day-to-day -day life how to build that vibrational body. Participating consciously and staying in such peace, in such stillness that the Kundalini rises naturally and easily. It doesn't have to be hugely upsetting in our lives. People go through huge amounts of unnecessary unrest in their lives. Um, oh, we've each done it, I've done it. There's no doubt about it. We have to go through the proving out and the choice where we finally get a point and the mind and the heart says, enough, <laughs> I give up, uncle. Because until the mind and heart want to give up and stop creating the, the problems that it does, there's no hope. The mind and heart just keep recreating challenges and problems and situations and circumstances where it wants to manipulate by itself. Eventually, of course, people come to the point of death and the mind and the heart realize they have no control. <laughs> so there's no point just waiting till the point of death, frankly. Uh, people die waiting. They die their whole life. But the thing is to start to live, to allow this substance to ascend. 
not for anyone else's benefit. Not only for your benefit, though, because the more people there are who experience the sacred union of divineness and humanness as one, the more God is here on earth, the creator being that is you is on earth, the God being, the goddess being is here, being able to do something, bless people, bless circumstances, because again, none are free till all are free. We're not trying to go to heaven in that sense, because we don't have to. The process becomes one of coming into the earth, bringing heaven into this reality, being able to extend a heavenly blessing into our form, into the form of others, being able to extend the blessing of consciousness, of conscious thought, into the realm of this world, being able to bring into the realm of the heart peace, so we can create peace through our body, through the mind, through the heart, through our actions, through our thoughts, through the words, through the interactions with others. We become the peacemakers to, who are charged with bringing heaven in, bringing peace into the world. Because if we can as individuals bring peace into the world, and we can assist others in our world state peace, and they can complete the process in themselves. It's not a matter of standing on a soapbox or putting out flyers or anything like that. No, it's a natural state of consciousness. The world, your divineness will give you certain ones, will attract certain ones to you who feel and sense the realm of peace, the dimension that they long for. Because this is truly in everybody's heart. It's the deepest desire to live in peace. It's the deepest desire to live in the oneness of heaven and earth, of God and, and creator and creation. And once the mind and the heart exhaust all the different uh, juggling things and hoops and things that it, they try to do to create it and do it itself, because of the reason that it messes things up even more, then mind and heart finally let go and say, okay, I give up. And as such, Lao Tzu said that very clearly, the world is served by those who let go. Let go of creating all sorts of messes, creating all sorts of conflicts, choosing all sorts of patterns of conflict. Because we choose them individually, nobody else is choosing them for us. Um, I've experienced choosing it for myself, and the ultimate awareness for me in it was, wait a second, I don't have to do this. <laughs> I don't have to live in the conflict. I don't have to keep recreating it. I can make a different choice because it's my choice. And I can't change anybody else's choice. And I don't choose to change anybody else's choice. But I don't have to stay in patterns of conflict. I can choose to be in a pattern of peace. This is the treasure. Peace is such a treasure. To live in peace to experience peace with our family and friends and the creatures and the people that we interact with, the people that we see, the people that are on the screen of our lives. This is the world where we are given to experience and imbue with peace and live in peace. So ascension is a very, 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 very practical thing. It's not a belief. There's no point believing in it. It's a day-to-day -day thing. It's a thing of creating peace, shaping it, forming it, choosing it, and always being true to ourselves as individuals. We don't have to be true to anybody else. You don't have to be true to me or anybody else's ideas. To thine own self be true. To thy God-Self, thy Goddess-Self, be true. 
And that's the treasure. The union between you and your divine being is the treasure. It's the only thing that is worthwhile in all of life. It's the thing that we serve as humans. And it's the thing that gives us life as humans. But our consciousness is meant to merge into the oneness of it. Merge into the oneness of eternal deity, eternal goodness, eternal life. And that's the process we're in here on Earth. We're meant to ascend. And in the ascending process, be good in the world. You don't have to be God in the world and dictate anything. Or no, we just have to be God with two O's, revealing that we can make peace in each other, in, in with our friends and family, with the creatures, because it comes through our skin. It, it can be extended through the vibration. We can direct it across time and space. We can direct it from one side of the planet to another. We can send a blessing of peace to anybody. We can think of somebody who's experiencing something and through our own form, we can send a radiant blessing of life force, of peace to that individual, that person. Because the light body exists beyond the three-dimensional. So there's a huge amount of opportunity to experience it. So this is the, the playground of not sainthood, not enlightenment, but the oneness, the opportunity of oneness. And yeah, people who experienced it in the, in the past were named saints and sages and teachers, and but they, I'm sure, didn't choose or want to be uh, put on a pedestal in that fashion because there's no pedestal that's worth being put on. And I'm sure most of the teachers and sages and gurus, etc., who are worth following were all ones who showed others the way how they could do it and how they could live in a realm beyond just the challenges of day-to-day -day life. We're meant to be individually reveal the divineness, the sainthood, the holiness. And it's not a prestigious place because it's not. There's no awards given out because there isn't. There's no prestige or certificate or something like that. No, there's none of that. The reward is in serving the light and in looking after our worlds as best as we can, shaping it, forming it, blessing it, being in it, revealing that we're not trying to go anywhere, we're not trying to go out of the world, we're not trying to leave Earth. We're here. We're bringing peace and divineness into the world where it's meant to be. So that heaven and earth are one and revealed as a very simple thing beyond belief. You know, let's not believe in it for heaven's sake and for the earth's sake. Let's reveal it through day-to-day -day life, through thankfulness to the divine being that's here, pumping blood through you, pumping blood through your form, healing and creating a reality until the moment when the shift happens for you and you suddenly realize how amazing it is that you are one with God, that you are one with the Divine. Not just that God is with you, but you are God in your world. You are the Divine Being in your world here to bless your world with sacred light, assisting everything to come back into a holy, sacred nirvana, heaven, paradise. That's why we're here for all the world to be recreated into such a world of peace.
for all people, not just for ourselves, because it goes beyond that. Our job, our love, is to create it so that it expands and blesses all the people, all the creatures, all the rocks and minerals and vegetation, so that the life force that's given to you and me as individuals can be a means of transforming the world into sacredness, a sacred peace. And all the ways that you will know from inside, that you will extend from inside. So it's good to be here with you. I'm deeply appreciative for the process that's built right into the mechanism of life. And I'm deeply appreciative for, in this day, each one of you and all those here on Earth who are awakening to reality, awakening to divinity, awakening to the truth. You are divine. All are divine. And in that way, God is here, the Creator. Krishna, Buddha, whatever name you want to give to God. But your divine being is part of the Creator, part of the Co-Creator is here on Earth to do something. So it's good to be here with you and to extend from our gathering into each of the people that we're connected to a blessing of peace, into all of our worlds a blessing of peace, so that peace blesses all of the our family and friends, all of the people in this whole holy sacred earth, all of the creatures and rocks and minerals with peace, now and forever.